Chapter Twelve of Marion Harlan's Cookery for Beginners. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betty B. Marion Harlan's Cookery for Beginners. Chapter Twelve Desserts. English cooks would call this a chapter on sweets. Dessert with them is usually applied to fruits, nuts, etc webster defines the word thus a service of pastry fruit or sweetmeats at the close of an entertainment the last course at the table after the meat without dwelling upon the fact that when fruit and coffee are served they follow pastry or puddings or sweetmeats we take advantage of the elastic definition and assume that the dessert of the family dinner is a single preparation of sweets the too universal pie will not appear on our menu i am tempted to wish its manufacture might soon be numbered among the lost arts bayard taylor once said that if rum had slain its thousands in america pork fat fried and pies had slain their ten thousands the average pastry of our beloved land would drive a patrick henry to self-exile if he were obliged to eat it every day nor could one of a dozen inexperienced cooks manipulate puff paste as it should be handled in order to be flaky and tender dexterity of motion and strength of wrist are needed for this operation such as belong only to the trained cook the more wholesome and daintier jellies custards and trifles and plain puddings we have selected from the vast variety of sweet things known to our housewives are adapted to the powers of novices in cookery and not unworthy the attention of adepts boiled custard this is the base of so many nice fancy dishes and it itself so excellent and popular that we may properly lay the knowledge how to prepare it properly as the foundation stone of dessert making one quart of fresh sweet milk five eggs one cup of sugar one quarter teaspoonful of salt one teaspoonful of essence of vanilla lemon or bitter almond heat the milk to a boil in a farina kettle or in a tin pail set in a pot of boiling water in warm weather put a bit of soda no larger than a pea in the milk while it is heating beat the eggs in a bowl when the milk is scalding add the salt and sugar and pour the hot liquid upon the eggs stirring all the while beat up well and return to the inner vessel keeping the water in the outer at a hard boil stir two or three times in the first five minutes afterward almost constantly in a quarter of an hour it ought to be done but of this you can only judge by close observation and practice the color changes from deep to creamy yellow the consistency to a soft richness that makes it drop slowly and heavily from the spoon and the mixture tastes like a custard instead of uncooked eggs sugar and milk when you have done it right once you recognize these signs ever afterward if underdone the custard will be crude and watery if overdone it will clot or break take it when quite right just at the turn directly from the fire and pour it into a bowl to cool before flavoring with the essence with a good boiled custard as the beginning we can make scores of delightful desserts first among these we may place cup custard fill small glasses nearly to the top with cold custard whip the whites of three eggs stiff beat in three teaspoonfuls of bright colored jelly currant if you have it heap a tablespoon of this meringue on the surface of each glassful set in a cold place until it goes to table floating island fill a glass bowl almost to the top with cold boiled custard and cover with the meringue made as in last receipt do not whip in the jelly so thoroughly as to color the frothed whites it is a prettier dish when the bright red specks just dot the snowy mass frosted custard make a nice custard let it get perfectly cold and pile on it instead of the whipped egg a large cupful of grated coconut sprinkling it on carefully not to disturb the custard eat with sponge cake blanc mange like custard this is the base the central idea or fact of numberless elegant compounds and is delightful in its simplest form one package of cooper's gelatin three pints of fresh sweet milk one even cupful of white sugar 
one half teaspoonful of salt one teaspoonful of vanilla or other essence soda as large as a pea put into the milk soak the gelatin three hours in a cupful of cold water then heat the milk salted in a farina kettle when it is scalding stir in without taking the vessel from the fire the sugar and soaked gelatin stir three minutes after it is boiling hot and strain through a coarse cloth into a bowl let it get almost cold before adding the flavoring wet a clean mold with cold water pour in the blanc mange and set on ice or in a cold place until firm dip a cloth in hot water wring until it will not drip wrap around the mold turn bottom upward on a flat dish and shake gently to dislodge the contents eat with powdered sugar and cream chocolate custard five minutes before taking the custard from the fire add to it three heaping tablespoonfuls of grated baker's chocolate rubbed to a paste with a little cold milk stir until the mixture is of a rich coffee color turn out and when cold flavor with vanilla and pour into glasses whip the whites of three eggs to a smooth meringue beat in three tablespoonfuls of powdered sugar and heap upon the brown mixture chocolate blanc mange our french scholars will say that this should be termed brune mange mix with the soaked gelatin four heaping tablespoonfuls of baker's chocolate grated and stir into the scalding milk and treat as above directed in straining squeeze the bag hard to extract all the coloring matter flavor with vanilla coffee blanc mange soak the gelatin in a cupful of strong clear black coffee instead of the cold water and proceed as with plain blanc mange using no other flavoring than the coffee tea blanc mange is made in the same way by substituting for the water very strong mixed tea eat with powdered sugar and cream pineapple trifle one packet of gelatin two cups of white sugar one small pineapple peeled and cut into bits one half teaspoonful of nutmeg juice and grated peel of a lemon three cups of boiling water whites of four eggs soak the gelatin four hours in a cup of cold water put into a bowl with the sugar nutmeg lemon juice and rind and minced pineapple rub the fruit hard into the mixture with a wooden spoon and let all stand together covered two hours then pour upon it the boiling water and stir until the gelatin is dissolved line a colander with a double thickness of clean flannel and strain the mixture through it squeezing and wringing the cloth hard to get the full flavor of the fruit set on ice until cold but not until it is hard it should be just jellied around the edges when you begin to whip the whites of the eggs in a bowl set in ice water when they are quite stiff beat in a spoonful at a time the gelatin whip a minute after adding each supply to mix it in perfectly half an hour's work with the dover will give you a white spongy mass pleasing alike to eye and taste wet a mould with cold water put in the sponge and set on ice until you are ready to turn it out this is a delicious dessert for pineapple substitute strawberries raspberries or peaches a simple susan two cups of fine dry bread crumbs three cups of chopped apple one cup of sugar one teaspoonful of mace and half as much allspice two teaspoonfuls of butter one tablespoonful of salt butter a pudding dish and cover the bottom with crumbs lay on these a thick layer of minced apple sprinkle it lightly with salt and spices more heavily with sugar stick bits of butter over all then more crumbs going on in this order until all the ingredients are used up the top layer should be crumbs cover closely and bake half an hour remove the cover and set on the upper grating of the oven until nicely browned send to table in the dish in which it was baked sauce for the above two cupfuls of powdered sugar two tablespoonfuls of butter half teaspoonful of mace or nutmeg juice strained of a lemon two tablespoonfuls of boiling water melt the butter with the hot water and beat in with egg whisk or dover the sugar a little at a time until the sauce is like a cream add lemon juice and nutmeg mold into a mound on a glass dish or a deep plate and set in a cold place until it is firm this is a good hard sauce for any hot pudding cottage pudding two eggs one cup of milk one cup of sugar one tablespoonful of butter three cups of prepared flour if you have not the prepared 
use family flour with two tablespoonfuls of baking powder sifted twice with it one tablespoonful of salt put the sugar in a bowl warm the butter slightly but do not melt it and rub it with a wooden spoon into the sugar until they are thoroughly mixed together beat the eggs light in another bowl stir in the sugar and butter then the milk the salt and lastly the flour butter a tin cake mould well pour in the batter and bake about forty minutes in a steady oven should it rise very fast cover the top with white paper as soon as a crust is formed to prevent scorching when you think it is done stick a clean dry straw into the thickest part if it comes up smooth and not sticky the loaf is ready to be taken up loosen the edges from the mould with a knife turn out on a plate and send hot to table cut with a keen blade into slices and eat with pudding sauce an easy receipt and one that seldom fails to give general satisfaction End of chapter 12chapter thirteen of marion harland's cookery for beginners this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b marion harland's cookery for beginners chapter thirteen cake making never undertake cake unless you are willing to give to the business the amount of time and labor needed to make it well materials tossed together anyhow may once in a great while come out right but the manufacturer has no right to expect this or to be mortified when the product is a failure before breaking an egg or putting butter and sugar together collect all your ingredients sift the flour and arrange close to your hand the bowls egg beater cake moulds ready buttered etc begin by putting the measured sugar into a bowl and working the butter into it with a wooden spoon warm the butter slightly in cold weather rub and stir until the mixture is as smooth and light as cream indeed this process is called creaming now beat the yolks of your eggs light and thick in another bowl wash the egg beater well wipe dry and let it get cold before whipping the whites to a standing heap in a third vessel keep the eggs cool before and while you beat them add the yolks to the creamed butter and sugar beating hard one minute put in the milk when milk is used the spices and flavoring whip in the whites and lastly the sifted and prepared flour beat from the bottom of the mixing bowl with a wooden spoon bringing it up full and high with each stroke and as soon as the ingredients are fairly and smoothly mixed stop beating or your cake will be tough let your first attempt be with cupcake baked in small tins learn to manage your oven well before risking pound or fruit cake should the dough or batter rise very fast lay white paper over the top that this may not harden into a crust before the middle is done to ascertain whether the cake is ready to leave the oven thrust a clean straw into the thickest part if it comes out clean take out the tins and set them gently on a table or shelf to cool before turning them upside down on a clean dry cloth or dish a good cupcake one cup of butter two cups of sugar powdered four eggs one cup of sweet milk one teaspoonful of vanilla one half teaspoonful of mace three cups of prepared flour or the same quantity of family flour with one even teaspoonful of soda and two of cream tartar sifted twice with it two teaspoonfuls of baking powder will serve the same end mix as directed in practical preliminaries and bake in small tins jelly cake is made by mixing the above cupcake leaving out the flavoring and baking it in jelly cake tins turning these out when almost cold by running a knife around the edges and spreading all but that intended for the top with a thick coating of fruit jelly sift white sugar over the upper one or frost it cream cake mix a cup cake without spice or other flavoring bake in jelly cake tins and when cold spread between the layers this filling one egg one cup of milk one half cup of sugar two rounded teaspoonfuls of cornstarch one teaspoonful of vanilla or other essence scald the milk in a farina kettle wet the cornstarch with a little cold milk 
and stir into that over the fire until it thickens have the egg ready whipped light into a bowl beat it in the sugar pour the thick hot milk upon this gradually stirring fast return to the kettle and boil still stirring to a thick custard let it cool before seasoning frost the top cake or sift powdered sugar over it coconut cake mix and bake as for jelly cake flavoring with rose water whip the whites of three eggs to a stiff froth add one cup of powdered sugar and two-thirds of a grated coconut when the cakes are cold spread between the layers to the remaining third of the coconut add four tablespoonfuls of powdered sugar and cover the top of the cake with it apple cake mix and bake as for jelly cake flavoring the dough with essence of bitter almond beat one egg light in a bowl and into it a cup of sugar add to this the strained juice and grated rind of a lemon peel and grate three fine pippins or other ripe tart apples directly into this mixture stirring each well in before adding another when all are in put into a farina kettle and stir over the fire until the apple custard is boiling hot and quite thick cool and spread between the cakes a nice and simple cake eat the day it is baked chocolate cake mix and bake as for jelly cake flavoring with vanilla for filling whip the whites of three eggs stiff stir in one cup and a half of sugar and four tablespoonfuls of baker's vanilla chocolate grated beat hard for two minutes and spread between the layers and on the top of the cake white cup cake one cup of butter two cups of powdered sugar three cups of prepared flour one cup of sweet milk whites of five eggs one teaspoonful of essence of bitter almond cream butter and sugar add milk and beat hard before putting in the whites of the eggs stir in flavoring and lightly and quickly the prepared flour bake in small tins frosting for cake whites of three eggs three cups of powdered sugar strained juice of a lemon put the whites into a cold bowl and add the sugar at once stirring it in thoroughly then whip with your egg beater until the mixture is stiff and white adding lemon juice as you go on spread thickly over the cake and set in the sun or in a warm room to dry white lemon cake make white cup cake bake in jelly cake tins and let it get cold prepare a frosting as above directed but use the juice of two lemons and the grated peel of one spread this mixture between the cakes and on the top sponge cake do not attempt this until you have had some practice in the management of ovens and let your first trial be with what are sometimes termed snowballs that is small sponge cakes frosted put six eggs into a scale and ascertain their weight exactly allow for the sponge cake the weight of the eggs in sugar and half their weight in flour grate the yellow peel from a lemon and squeeze the juice upon it let it stand ten minutes and strain through coarse muslin pressing out every drop beat the yolks of the eggs very light and then the sugar into them the lemon juice the whites which should have been whipped to a standing froth finally stir in the sifted flour swiftly and lightly bake in a steady oven from twenty five to thirty minutes glancing at them now and then to make sure they are not scorching and covering with white paper as they harden on top this is an easy and if implicitly obeyed a sure receipt nice gingerbread three eggs one cup of sugar one cup each of molasses loppered or buttermilk and of butter one tablespoon of ground ginger a teaspoonful of cinnamon and half as much allspice four and a half full cups of sifted flour one teaspoonful of soda dissolved in a tablespoonful of boiling water put butter molasses sugar and spice in a bowl set in a pan of hot water and stir with a wooden spoon until they are like brown cream take from the water and add the milk beat yolks and whites together until light in another bowl and turn the brown mixture gradually in upon them keeping the egg beater going briskly when well mixed add the soda at last the flour beat hard three minutes and bake in well buttered pans sugar cookies two cups of sugar one cup of butter three eggs whites and yolks beaten together about three cups of flour sifted with one teaspoonful of baking powder one teaspoonful of nutmeg and half this quantity of cloves cream butter and sugar beat in the whipped eggs and spice 
at a handful at a time the flour working it in until the dough is stiff enough to roll out flour your hands well and sprinkle flour over a pastry board make a ball of the dough and lay it on the board rub your rolling pin also with flour and roll the dough out into a sheet about a quarter of an inch thick cut into round cakes sift granulated sugar over each and bake quickly ginger snaps two cups of molasses one cup of sugar one cup of butter five cups of flour one heaping teaspoonful of ground ginger and the same quantity of allspice stir molasses sugar and butter together in a bowl set in hot water until very light mix in spices and flour and roll out as directed in last receipt but in a thinner sheet cut into small cakes and bake quickly all cakes in the composition of which molasses is used are more apt to burn than others watch your ginger snaps well but opening the oven as little as may be these spicy and toothsome cakes are better the second day than the first and keep well for a week or more End of chapter 13chapter fourteen of marion harland's cookery for beginners this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org marion harland's cookery for beginners chapter fourteen jellies creams and other fancy dishes for tea and luncheon or supper parties the pleasing custom in many families is to make the daughters responsible for fancy cookery mamma turns naturally when the company is expected to her young allies for the manufacture of cake jellies blanc mange etc and for the arrangement of fruit and flowers and seldom cavils at the manner in which they do the work the difference in the appointment of feasts in houses where there are girls growing up and grown and in those where there are none is so marked that i need not call attention to it lemon or orange jelly one package of gelatin soaked in two cups of cold water two and a half cups of sugar juice of four lemons and grated peel of two same of oranges three cups of boiling water a quarter teaspoonful powdered cinnamon soak the gelatin two hours add lemon juice grated peel sugar and spice and leave for one hour pour on the boiling water stir until dissolved and strain through double flannel do not shake or squeeze but let the jelly filter clearly through it into a bowl or pitcher set beneath wet molds in cold water and set aside to cool and harden ribbon jelly take one-third currant jelly one-third lemon jelly and as much plain blanc mange see desserts when all are cold and begin to form wet a mold pour in about a fourth of the red jelly and set on the ice to harden keep the rest in a warm room or near the fire so soon as the jelly is firm in the bottom of the mold add carefully some of the white blanc mange and return the mold to the ice when this will bear the weight of more jelly add a little of the lemon and when this forms another line of white proceed in this order dividing the red from the yellow by white until the jellies are used up leave the mold on ice until you are ready to turn the jelly out a pretty dish and easily managed if one will have patience to wait after putting in each layer until it is firm enough not to be disturbed or muddied by the next supply buttercup jelly one half package of gelatin soaked in half a cup of cold water for two hours three eggs one pint of milk one heaping cup of sugar one teaspoonful of vanilla bit of soda the size of a pea stirred into the milk heat the milk to scalding in a farina kettle and stir in the soaked gelatin until the latter is dissolved and strain through a coarse cloth beat the yolks of the eggs light add the sugar and pour the boiling mixture gradually upon it stirring all the time return to the farina kettle and stir three minutes or until it begins to thicken let it cool before you flavor it whip the white of one egg stiff and when the yellow jelly coagulates around the edges set the bowl containing the frothed white in cracked ice or in ice water and beat the jelly into it spoonful by spoonful with the egg whip until it is all in and your sponge thick and smooth wet a mold and set it on the ice to form lay about the base when you dish it 
whipped cream i have been assured by those who have made the experiment that excellent whipped cream can be produced and very quickly by the use of our incomparable dover egg beater i have never tried this but my pupils may if they have not a syllabub churn put a pint of rich sweet cream in a pail or other wide mouth vessel with straight sides and set in ice while you whip or churn it as the frothing cream rises to the top remove it carefully with a spoon and lay it in a perfectly clean and cold colander or on a hair sieve set over a bowl if any cream drips from it return to the vessel in which it is whipped to be beaten over again when no more froth rises whip a tablespoonful of powdered sugar into the white syllabub in the colander and it is ready for use swan's down cream one pint of whipped cream whites of three eggs beaten to a stiff froth one cup of powdered sugar one teaspoonful essence bitter almond just before you are ready to send the dish to table beat whipped cream frothed whites sugar and flavoring together in a bowl set deep in cracked ice heap in a glass dish and leave in the ice until it is to be eaten send sponge cake around with it jellied oranges cut a small round piece from the blossom end of each of six or eight oranges and scoop out the pulp very carefully so as not to widen the hole or tear the inside of the fruit use your fingers and a small teaspoon for this purpose until the oranges are empty and clean lay them then in very cold water while you prepare with the pulp and juice you have taken out and the grated peel of another orange half the quantity of orange jelly called for by the receipt for lemon jelly when it is quite cold fill the orange skins with it and set it in a cold place to harden in serving them cut the oranges crosswise with a sharp knife and arrange in a glass dish the open sides upward a few orange lemon or japonica leaves to line the edges of the dish will give a pretty effect ambrosia peel fine sweet oranges and cut into small pieces extracting the seeds put a layer in a glass dish and sprinkle well with sugar in this scatter a thick coating of grated coconut strewing this also with powdered sugar over the coconut lay thin slices of bananas peeled and cut crosswise fill the dish in this order the top being covered with banana a nice dessert for sundays and warm afternoons when one dreads the heat of the stove how to make coffee and tea if you wish to have really strong coffee allow a cup of freshly ground coffee to a quart of boiling water put the coffee in a bowl and wet with half a cup of cold water stir in the white and shell of a raw egg and turn into a clean newly scalded coffee boiler shut down the top and shake hard up and down a dozen times before pouring in the boiling water set where it will boil hard but not run over for twenty minutes draw to the side of the range and check the boil suddenly by pouring in a third of a cup of cold water let it stand three minutes to settle and pour off gently into the pot which is to be set on the table scald the milk to be drunk with coffee unless you can serve really rich cream with it tea first rule the water should boil second rule the water in which the tea is steeped must be boiling third rule the water used for filling the pot must be boiling i speak within bounds when i say that i could tell on the fingers of my two hands the tables at which i have drunk really good hot fresh tea sometimes it is made with boiling water then allowed to simmer on the range or hob until the decoction is rank reedy and bitter sometimes too little tea is put in and the beverage while hot enough is but faintly colored and flavored oftenest of all the tea is made with unboiled water or with water that did boil once but is now flat and many degrees below the point of ebullition scald the china or silver or tin teapot which the beverage is to flow directly into the cups put in an even teaspoonful of tea for each person who is to partake of it pour in a half cup of boiling water and cover the pot with a cozy or napkin for five minutes then fill up with boiling water from the kettle and take to the table fill the cups within three minutes or so and you have the fresh aroma of the delicious herb end of chapter fourteen
End of Marion Harlan's Cookery for Beginners.